you're welcome and thank you for coming yes, on and I'm sorry you. it's under these circumstances um, what what raised your concerns first of all well Breck joined um, this gaming group with friends from school some of the friends he had known since he was eight years old and from families that I knew so it didn't feel like he was doing anything dangerous um, but I noticed that there started to be a very sort of in control person and I would hear his voice and this was Danes and I asked Breck about him who is he because he sounded older and it concerned me that he was possibly a 40 year old man versus the 18 year old mm. that Breck said um, I listened out Breck had his door open and I could hear him gaming socializing you know laughing they were having a good time it wasn't anything it didn't feel sinister but as time went on, I could tell this person was sort of changing Breck's ideology, trying to tell him he didn't have to finish school because he could get him a Microsoft apprenticeship. He didn't have to go to church because he didn't want to. He didn't have to do chores because he didn't make a mess. And Breck always had this, well, Mom, I shouldn't have to because Lewis said. I shouldn't have to do this because Lewis said. And I'm like, you know, who is this person sort of now controlling my son's life? Mm -hmm. And um, Breck wrote a letter to me. And when I went to look at it, I actually backed out. And it was written by this predator, the whole letter like a manifesto explaining what Breck should and shouldn't do was written by this adult on my son's behalf. What's um, so frightening about your story is that it seems you did absolutely everything you could possibly do to protect your son and the first step that you took was to organize this intervention meeting and this wasn't just with Breck, this was also with his friends, the, the fellow gamers that he'd been playing with. What did you say to them at that point? Well, I had become so concerned that I contacted some other parents and I said, you know, what do you think about Lewis saying that he made two, $2 million in Bitcoin trades and gave it to the Syrian rebels? And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. What do you think about Lewis saying that, you know, he's, he's working for the U.S. government in New York at that age already doing undercover work on contract? And they're like, oh, we didn't know about that. So Breck really um, expressed, you know, with me more of what he was learning and hearing from Danes. So when I brought it to the other parents, they said, well, They've been gaming with, together for years. And then I said, well, does that make it safe? And then we had this meeting. We spoke to the boys. We said he won't show his face, so we don't know what he looks like. He, had, he said he had to be secret because he was working for you know, the US government. And I just didn't believe that he was really 18, even though he was because of the way he acted mm. so mature and controlling. Well, he found out about that intervention meeting, yes. and that's when all the communication was driven underground, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. In what he, way? Well, I had taken away all of Brex. Um, computer equipment on the same day I called the police and I just it was a consequence of him not getting off when I asked him to and it had just built up and so when I held this meeting unbeknownst to me Breck had recorded it even though I'd taken away all of his technology he had a little mp3 player that Danes asked him to record the meeting and at that point Danes knew exactly what we all felt about him and after that absolutely everything went underground and I listened out for that voice I listened for the name and I never heard another he thing. He sent him a phone, didn't he? he? He secretly couriered him a phone. He was gifting the boys games. I didn't know about that until after the police investigation. So when I called the police, I, you know, I had spent a lot of time on the, on the phone telling them about my concerns and mentioning grooming five times. And, and what, what reaction did you get from the police at the time then? Well, I was told three times that in police intelligence would be checked. And I passed on... Lewis Danes, I passed on, he had an alias, which I thought was strange to have an alias. I passed on that name, as well as passing on his age and the county where he was from, even though he, he said he lived other places. He, he had told Breck that he was from Essex, which is indeed where he had always lived. And once I passed all that information on, as I was nervous when I did it, to call, to call the police seems like you know the biggest thing, the highest thing in the land you can do to try to protect your child. And it was nerve-wracking nerve to do that. And after I did it, then I took away all of Breck's computer equipment, and I never, ever heard Dane's voice again until too two late. months Two months later, when, uh, when the, the terrible crime was, uh, was committed. And we, we, there's no need for us to go into that. I think we've made it quite clear what happened. Um, Jennifer, yeah. what happened, as far as the police are concerned? Well, our investigation revealed that there was a fundamental failing. Uh, the call handler took the call, as Lauren said, promised to pass it on to intelligence. Um, they didn't. They decided not to further action it. There's a, a, a sort of second check, which is a call closer, who should have checked what the call handler had done and, and, and probably and possibly made a different decision. And they didn't do anything either. So. Essentially, the, the system failed and, and, and the call wasn't dealt with. It's really worrying as a parent yeah. because you think this is your last port of call. You, you ring the police, you hope that something... You were always telling people on here, call someone, tell someone, speak to crime stoppers. 
And if this is the case where somebody rings up and then nothing gets you done... couldn't have given the and police this is the outcome, more, more information. What has changed since then? What have you put in place to make sure this never, ever happens again? Well, I think, I mean, this happened, Surrey Police Force were responsible for this, and they have put a number of steps in place to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And one of the reasons that we're, um, we're really publicly speaking about this is because it's important that lessons are learned. And I've written to the National uh, uh, Police Chiefs, uh, um, sorry, the National Police Chiefs Group, and, and asked them to make sure that all forces check, uh, to make sure that they've got the, the right systems in place. Mm. And we've, we've also made sure, that one, we, one of the things we can do with our reports is actually ask the force to respond to the recommendations that we make. And that's what we have done in this case. <laughs>